Hey, Jared, can you put laces in a laceless boot? What's going on, guys? Josh from SoccerReviewsForYou.com, bringing you yet another SR4U Q&A video, your football boot-related questions, and my answers to them, all pulled from my Instagram, which you see on screen right now, SR4U underscore Josh. So if you have a football boot-related question that you'd like me to answer potentially in the next Q&A video, go follow me there if you don't already. It's on screen and also linked in the description. Also, if you guys enjoy the Q&A series on the channel and want to see it continue, don't forget to support this one with a like. And if you're new here watching for the first time and don't want to miss out on daily content from me make sure you hit that subscribe button along with the little bell notification so you get notified when the next new video goes live jaquan my question is can you bend it like beckham To be honest with you, I just wanted to show that clip. And my uncle is David Beckham. Jimfa, what YouTubers do you watch? I can tell you without a doubt, my personal favorite YouTube channel is the Boot Nerd Podcast channel, which if you're not subscribed to, definitely go and check it out. I do a podcast with J Mike from Unisport. We talk about all the latest football boots, the latest news, and pretty much all kinds of other stuff, including answering a bunch of your questions. So if you like this kind of content, definitely go check out the podcast. But in terms of other channels that I am not a part of, that I regularly watch, I really enjoy watching Brian Shaw's channel, who is four times world's strongest man. He's actually competing right now as I'm making this video. So by the time this goes up, he may or may not have won his fifth world's strongest man title. But to me, it's very fascinating to see somebody that is legitimately one of the strongest human beings in the world how he trains, the the logic behind everything that he does is something that I find to be totally fascinating. Um, I do check out the Unisport Guys channel because I think the production value that they offer um, is pretty incredible for football boots. And uh, other than that, I don't watch a lot. Like pure YouTuber people that just kind of vlog every single day. That's not something that I'm really into just because I feel like that's not really real life. It's just, I don't know, I could care less to kind of watch other people live their life. I'd rather just kind of live my own. Uh, but I would say Brian Shaw's channel right now is something that I, I'm excited when every new video goes up. Hey Yaroslav, do you think Lotto will return to be one of the greats or close to that when they're basically starting from scratch now? So for those that don't know, Lotto is an Italian based company that used to be one of the leaders in modern football boots. I would say early 2000s, late 90s was when they were the most popular, but obviously the popularity has dropped off significantly they're also responsible for the world's first laceless boot and i made a video because they're coming back with a new laceless boot that hopefully i'll be reviewing on the channel sooner rather than later either way the question is can lotto return to the position that they were once in and i think the honest answer to that question is it is very 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 unlikely even if they were making the best boots in the world and everyone agreed on that i still think it's very unlikely. The marketing power and money that Nike, Adidas, and Puma have to spend is why they will remain the top three brands for the foreseeable future. I just don't think that there's anything any of the smaller brands can do to really take up a significant amount of their market share. J Mark reporting for duty. Also, what's the dumbest thing you've done to a boot? It would be either this or this. Hey, Jackie Chan, do you think next-gen Nike boots, Tiempos, and Mercurials will include quad fit? So far, the Tiempos all but confirm it in leaks and the Mercurials have the texture. Look, I've seen the leaks as well. I know a lot of people message me stuff as if I am completely in the dark when it comes to unreleased products. I'm not, trust me on that. So I have seen that it does look like the next generation Tiempo will utilize quad fit, but I said this back when quad fit first came out on the Nike Phantom Vision. This is a technology that's very good. It legitimately works, and as Nike has done, over the years is whenever they come up with a new technology it usually gets rolled out into other forms of footwear and as many models as possible we saw this with flywire we are likely now seeing it with quad fit to a certain extent whether or not the next gen mercurial will have it because you commented on it being an external element on the boot it's not an external element it's an internal sock type thing so the texture 
of the next generation mercurial that we have seen does not indicate that it will have quad fit in any way at all and i honestly think it's unlikely because quad fit is basically an internal liner that is separate from the upper itself meaning that there has to be two layers of materials makes sense on a tempo if the outer layer is leather and the inner layer is the quad fit on a mercurial to have two layers of material i don't think makes a lot of sense um but yeah i'm not really surprised that quad fits making its way onto other footwear from nike hey jason what's the best way to treat a blister if you've got to play the next day i want to preface my answer with i'm not a blister expert i'm not a doctor and i'm only going to tell you what i would personally do whether or not that is the best method i'm not entirely sure if you have a better idea or some advice for this guy please leave it down below in the comments because i'd actually be curious myself if i've been treating blisters the wrong way over these years but what i would personally do is i would soak the blister in warm water and make sure that the area is as clean as possible and then basically for the rest of the day i would make sure that i have no socks on my feet and i have nothing touching that blister to hopefully let it dry out as much as possible come the next day it's still going to be pretty raw. It's still going to hurt. And what I would personally do is pretty much tape up the area as much as possible and, and pretty much deal with it. There really isn't much else to do. There is the Coutinho method of just completely cutting a hole in the area where the blister would be. That would definitely work in regards to relieving pressure on that specific, specific spot. But I don't think that you want to cut a hole in your boots. If the blister is that fresh, it's going to suck no matter what. Hey James, what is the best place to purchase boots that are a number of packs old that are no longer being advertised or sold on big name websites? A very common misconception when it comes to football boots and all the new colorways that we get is that they are constantly in production. That is not actually the case at all. When a colorway drops today, it was manufactured typically one to three months prior to the official release so by the time that it comes out right now they're actually producing the colorway packs that are going to come out in two three four months from now the big retailers don't have them anymore because they sold out and there's none left so my advice if you're looking for older boots is check out ebay and obviously when you go on ebay you have to be aware that there are plenty of counterfeits out there and there are people trying to scam you on ebay there's no doubt about that so you have to be very careful and kind of know what you're getting into and know what you're buying but that is going to be probably the number one place to find older stuff that is pretty much the number one source where I've found 99% of the older stuff that I personally have in my collection. So uh, eBay. Hey Juan, is it bad playing without insoles? Does it make the boot die sooner? I actually recently played without insoles for about half an hour until I realized that the insoles weren't in my boots. It was not on purpose. I removed the insoles for whatever reason and I think I was rushing to get there. I was running a little bit late so I just threw my boots on and got on. It was just a pickup game and after about 20 minutes or so I kind of started to feel like hey these are uh, a little bit uncomfortable compared to how they normally feel and then I realized I didn't have any insoles in which basically means that you're running on the hard plastic underside of the sole plate so it's something that you can definitely do it's not going to harm the boots I personally find it to be very uncomfortable once I put the insoles back in the boots felt a hundred times better to me but if for whatever reason you find it more comfortable to play without the insoles there's nothing wrong with that and it's certainly not going to hurt the boots what inspired you to do a YouTube channel based on boots I've definitely talked about this before but not in a very long time but for me when I first started my motivation was one obviously I really liked football boots and if I could try all of the latest products that's something that I always wanted to do and also I was buying a lot of products I was working at a soccer store so basically all the money I was making went towards buying brand new boots that I absolutely did not need and I didn't have a lot of money I wanted to buy the best possible boots that I could buy for the money that I was making so I would look up reviews and all the reviews that I found just weren't what I was looking for they were almost more so based around marketing rather than actual opinions and I knew obviously working at this store having tried pretty much everything on that not all boots were a 10 out of 10 like the reviews would suggest so my motivation was mostly that I wanted brutally honest opinions out there it happened to be my brutally honest opinion and I think that people have responded very well to that because it's important to know that not every single product is worth buying. Not every single product is as good as you think it might be. And there is a lot of, I don't want to say misinformation, but maybe some misleading marketing uh, that's out there in the football boot industry when it comes to new tech and new boots and new materials and whatever it might be. So my main motivation for this was I really like boots 
and I want it to be brutally honest, which I have done. Do you like that most football boots nowadays have a knitted part between the laces or do you prefer an old school tongue? I don't want to say that tongues are bad, but for the most part, I'm pretty happy with the knitted tongues, these one piece upper constructions that we have now, simply based on the fact that something that has always bothered me about football boots, and I think most people will agree once they hear what I have to say, is that many tongues can often bunch up. The material crinkles a little bit, especially when you're putting them on, and adjusting that and playing around with it, even having the tongue slide from side to side while you're playing can be extremely annoying. With a knitted material just filling in the middle, typically elasticated, it stretches to the exact shape of your foot. You don't have to deal with the upper, with the tongue moving. You don't have to deal with any materials crinkling. It's pretty much a perfect match that instantaneously just stretches around your foot, almost like a pair of socks. But I feel like an elasticated knitted material for the tongue filling in the central portion of the upper, it just works really well. Hey Jack, what's the best way to repair sole separation before it gets worse? I'd love to tell you that there was a good way to fix the sole separating from the upper, but there really isn't. What a lot of people don't realize is that the manufacturing process of attaching a sole plate to the upper isn't necessarily just glue, it's actually what they call cement. It's not actual cement, obviously, but it's a very, very difficult and expensive process to bond the sole plate to the upper in such a way where the boots are actually going to be somewhat durable. And obviously durability is another topic in itself when it comes to modern football boots, but you can't just go and buy any kind of glue or even a super glue or crazy glue or whatever kind of incredible glue that they have out there at the store. You can't just put it in the gap and hope that it's going to stick. They're is just nothing that I'm aware of that's going to keep the sole plate from separating from the upper or reattach the sole plate in the upper if it's already separated. Also a quick tip for you guys, if the sole is separating from the upper on your football boots and you try to fix it with glue, you have now modified the boots. Obviously that had nothing to do with the sole separating, but you've modified them, therefore voiding the warranty. Whereas if your boots are relatively new and the sole plate separates from the upper, typically you can send them back directly to the manufacturer, whether it's Nike, Adidas, Puma, whatever brand it might be, send it to their warranty department. And if they deem it to be a manufacturing defect as to why why the boots separated or broke so easily, they will replace them for you. Hey, Dravis Scott, would you say the new Puma Kings are better than the original Copa Mundials? Historically, there is no doubt that the Adidas Copa Mundial is a far more important pair of football boots. You could argue that it is the most important pair of football boots of all time. And it's still a great football boot if you're after that old school feel, high quality kangaroo leather, made in Germany quality, as well as just a touch on the ball that really no other boot offers. A Copa Mundial really does feel distinctly like a Copa Mundial, but it is lacking in a lot of areas uh, performance-wise when compared to modern football boots. They're kind of heavy. They stretch quite a lot. It's not the most responsive. The traction isn't overly aggressive. They take a long time to dry out. Um, there are downsides to older style football boots, whereas the modern Puma King Platinum does not suffer from a lot of those issues, but it also feels completely different. So it just depends on what you're looking for. If you like the old school thing, go for classic Copa if you like something a lot more modern, you're probably going to prefer the King Platinum. Anyways, guys, that's it for another Q&A. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. If you did, be sure to support it with a like. Again, if you have a question that you'd like me to answer in the next Q&A video, make sure you follow me on Instagram, sr4u underscore Josh. I'll make a post probably in a couple days from now asking you guys to ask questions and I pull the best ones from those particular posts. So follow me there if you don't already. Other than that, if you have any questions regarding anything that I talked about in this video, please leave it down below in the comments and I'll do my best to get an answer out to you as soon as I possibly can. Subscribe if you haven't already for daily videos on all the latest and greatest soccer gear. You can find all my social media information linked down below in the description as well. And other than that, guys, thank you so much for watching and we'll see you in the next one.